All right. Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Uh, once again, we're all here together. It's nice to see you all, members of the Academy and the rest of our uh, extended family from uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram. Uh, the topic of the day, we're going to, uh, one of our participants asked me to talk about the importance of being truthful to your own feelings and uh, allowing yourself to feel whatever that arises within you. Is that right, Ms. Hilde? That's what you wanted me to talk about? Yeah, hi, Monet. Yeah, and the importance of not suppress them, because I've done that all my life, and you know, when you taught me to just feel them and just be in the feelings, because then they will disappear. And I've always been using sugar, you know, sugar and food. But uh, right. yeah, it don't disappear, you know, so just have to be in them. So the importance of really allowing ourselves to feel our feelings and not suppressing them and expressing them if it's necessary. So we're going to get into that. And uh, while a part of the entrance of, to enter into the fifth dimensional consciousness and in in it's a consciousness of the oneness is is based on recognizing and realizing that we are neither our our feelings or our thoughts and ultimately our body why we're working on that to recognize that a part of it is also the recognition of not suppressing our emotions now a, a vast majority of people on the planet they spend a lot of time on working on their past issues and the traumas and and which is okay to certain point Okay, I want to be clear about this because I don't want to be, I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. It's important for a lot of people to work on their past traumas and addressing them and getting into it and going through it because a lot of people, they're also in denial and they just live their life, a whole life from, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years old to 80, 90 years old, and they don't deal with it. And they have suppressed their emotions and they never address them. And they're just sitting there. On the flip side, there are people I know, since I've been in this spiritual path for God knows, ever since the ever since, 30 years, 40 years I've been on this path, I also see a vast majority of spiritual seekers who are stuck in this loop that they continuously are going over one retreat and one workshop, one therapist to another therapist over and over and over again working on their inner child, working on their traumas, working on whatever has happened. My daddy did this. My mommy did that. I have been abandoned. I've been, I've been used and abused. And they're stuck there. And they're continuously working on this. And, and it's a very dangerous place to be in because it doesn't go anywhere. It just keeps repeating itself. It's kind of like a um, emotional masturbation. So it really doesn't come up with any results. One thing is being 
resolved and another thing pops out and then we're working on another thing and something else pops up. At the one point, you're going to have to go beyond. And so we're, I'm going to explain to you what I mean by this and how is to deal with it. What's the solution in order to transcend? Because if we're going to be working on our emotions over and over again, this is an endless uh, endeavor. I mean, we can spend our, our entire life doing, doing this as I basically because I'm in this industry and working with a lot of people and I can see that it's, this doesn't end, it just keeps going. And, uh, and I feel sorry, uh, bad for them. And I try to help these people, but they're not listening. Sometimes they're listening to me and they're able to free themselves, but the rest of the time they're stuck of working on this, on, on their emotional stuff. So, um, especially with women, because women are much more sensitive and, uh, and also because of their biology, because of their hormonal um, hormones. So they, they have this ups and down and the, because the way they are wired. So they, they have these ups and downs more than men. Men are wired differently. So what do we do? And how do we transcend and go beyond? How do we do that? So the, what happens is as we're just growing up, naturally, vast majority of human beings, they, they're suppressed. And we're being, as we're growing up, we're growing up with unconscious parents and unconscious society, as you can see what's going on around the world. You, that our parents, our education, our schools, they're not spiritual and they have no idea about being aware and awake. Yeah, these days there's a little bit of a movement and there's a bit of a consciousness, awareness coming into how to deal with the kids. Like most parents, they don't beat their kids anymore. Uh, or in school, they don't beat the children, depending which country you're in. But when I was growing up, beating, beating up kids was very common, either beating, up, beating the kids in school or at home. So it was a very common thing. Parents would beat their kids or teachers would beat the children. I mean, I was beaten up a bunch of times in school. So it was a very common thing and nobody thought of it any different. So, so there's a lot of traumas there. And, and also uh, nobody wanted to talk about it. And as well as, as we're growing up, especially if you're a little bit different, let's say you have a bit of an art, art you you're, have this spiritual side of you or you are more drawn into like music or arts, create creativity. And still to this point, vast majority of families, they're thinking very square and they're thinking like if you are in high school or you're finishing your high school, you want to enter into the professional world, you need to get a job or you need to have your own business. This has to be something tangible. And they mock you and make fun of you. Let's say if you're a painter and you want to paint or you're a musician uh, or you're a poet, or a lot of different things, or you want to do healing work, they mock you and they make fun of you as, well, this is not a way of making money. You're not going to get anywhere. 
that's not the way to go. Of course, now with all these new wave of what's happening in the world with the new generations in uh, more progressive countries, it's becoming more accepted. And uh, parents don't mark the, the kids as much as they used to. But still, uh, overall, it's still a general practice. So repressing children and naturally kids, they suppress their own feelings and emotions and they don't express it. Now, I have, again, I'm gonna go back to what I was talking about, that we're not our emotions. And we've talked about this uh, many, many times that we're not our emotions, but we're a vessel that is alive and there's sensitivity, it has a nervous system. And when something happened to us, we feel the emotions. And what we want to do basically is rather than suppressing our emotions is that we acknowledge whatever feeling is coming for us of, okay, let's say anger is here and I get something has happened. I feel very angry. I don't necessarily need to go and make an announcement to the world that I'm angry, but I can accept it within myself that, okay, anger is here. Rather than saying, I am angry, I'm accepting anger is here. I'm experiencing anger and being angry and not being ashamed of it or suppressing it and allow this anger to be and expresses itself. And while it's happening, I just allow it. And then by allowing it and expressing it, it loses its power and it passes through. And then the next thing comes, whatever that is. But let's say, for example, jealousy comes. I get jealous for what, some reason. And it's a, jealousy is a very uncomfortable feeling. Let's say you are with your sister, you're with one of your best friends, something really good happened for them or your best friend comes and tells you, hey, I met my soulmate, I'm really in love with, with this guy or this girl and, and this is it, and you you know you meet your um, your best friend's boyfriend or girlfriend, and is a knockout, and it looks fantastic, and they look really good, and for some reason, you get jealous. You don't want to be jealous, but you get jealous, and it's a very uncomfortable situation, and you're trying to act like. Uh, everything is normal, but jealousy has come up for you. And it's okay. What you want to do, of course, you don't want to walk up to your best friend and say, I'm jealous. But what you want to do is you want to admit it to yourself that jealousy is here and jealousy is visiting me. Jealousy is here, I'm experiencing it. Not You're not saying I am jealous. Saying I'm jealous is that you're identifying with jealousy and that's who you are. But admitting that the feelings are there, then that's a different story. You simply are staying with it. You're allowing it to be there. You're allowing this uncomfortable feeling to express itself and then 
not even you're letting go. Letting go means you're still trying to resist something. You're not letting anything go and you're not hanging on on anything. Okay, so this is very important because I've had people come and tell me, so Tustra, I did exactly as you told me to do. Oh, what did I tell you to do? Well, I, um, I felt jealous and then I pushed it away. I'm not asking you to push anything away. I'm not asking you to hug something, hanging on to it. I'm simply asking you to be this antenna, to be this, this sensor that is sensing. It's like you have a brand new BMW and it's got all these sensors. And if the something's wrong with your brakes, the sensor turns on and it gives you a signal that something is wrong with the brake. But the sensor, its job is to sense. That's all it does. It doesn't have any judgments. It doesn't have any stories. So we are the same way. We experience, let's say the jealousy is here. I'm experiencing it. I'm admitting it, it's here. And then it goes away because it doesn't have much power. If I hang on to it and I'm struggling with it and I'm trying to push it away, then it's got power. And it's whatever I resist against, it will persist. If I simply admit it and allow it to be, and then it's gone. It has no power. Now we can just go to whatever, depression or lack of self-love or hating ourselves. It happens to everybody. Let's say, I don't know, you're supposed to be doing something, something you don't like to do, and you're procrastinating, and you're not doing it. And there's a lot of stuff that we're supposed to be taking care of, and we're not taking care of it. And then comes this feeling of self-hate, that I hate myself for not taking care of what I need to take care of. Same thing. In the moment that the feeling starts to come, you allow it to be. Feel it, okay? I hate myself. Feel this feeling of hating yourself. It's not the end of the world. And it's fine, actually. It's a part of the mechanism. Sometimes you hate yourself. Sometimes you love yourself. Sometimes you're angry at yourself. Sometimes you regret. Sometimes you are uh, proud of what you did. That's not defining who you are. These are just emotions arising within this instrument of the body-mind mechanism that is able to sense and experience things. Experience it, express it if you have to express it, and then it's gone. Not even letting it go, because letting, even if we want to say, I let it go, there is still a, an involvement in it, as if you have the power to hold on to it, or you have the power to let it go. No. You're simply allowing things to surface and express themselves. And then they're gone. As simple as that. So far, does anybody have any questions or comments? Yeah, I have a comment. 
When you yeah. were t told me that for many years ago, I was just not thinking that it will disappear so fast because I have been processing and processing the feelings and all over again, you know. And when you taught me to just sit there and let the feeling just pass through me, that's the magic happened, actually. So I'm so happy that you told me. I'm so grateful for that because it's uh, it felt uh, really really bad, so to speak. It 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 really hurts, but when it disappears, it disappears, and then I feel the grace, you know. So that is a blessing. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear that. And then they, they may surface again. So, which is fine because there's always things showing up and disappearing. Uh, things appear, things disappear. Yeah. So, you know, you may be dealing with something for a long time and you think it's gone. And then few years after you're in another situation and then the emotion comes back you don't want to beat yourself up oh i thought i'm over this no same same rule you just do the same thing Wh while it appears you allow it you allow yourself to feel and you stay with it the problem is, and then it disappears. Excuse me. The problem is, there is most, for most people, there's a secondary reaction, which they begin to make a story out of it. And that's where we get ourselves into trouble by creating a story. Well, what does this mean? Um, where does this come from? And where is the roots of it? And now I need to work on it. And so now you're in trouble because you are recreating something that naturally if if you stay disconnected to it, means that you allow it to arise. While it arises, you feel it. Okay, I feel lonely. Okay, how many times in your life happens that you feel lonely? Especially those of us who are single. You have, you're living a single life. You don't have a partner in your life. And there are many, many moments that it will happen that your mind, you will hear thoughts in your head that I am so lonely. I don't have anyone in my life. Nobody, I don't have a love, a lover. And it, especially around, I, I always feel that around Christmas and New Year, not, no, Thanksgiving and Christmas is like everyone, all the couples get together and this, and I, I don't think I'm the only person. I've spoken to many, many different people and many, many people have told me like, oh, I hate Thanksgiving and I hate Christmas. Uh, why do you hate Thanksgiving and Christmas? And they say, well, because you're supposed to be somewhere or I have to go be with my family. And uh, I hardly ever spend any time with my family. And it's a horrible time. And yeah, 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 da, 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 da. But if you're single and you're not in a relationship or a healthy relationship with somebody around these holidays, naturally comes this or you don't have family, friends. There's millions of people around the world that are single and they're, for some reason, they don't have family or a lot of friends. So around this time of the year, they start feeling lonely. And then, which is okay. It's fine to feel lonely. 
It happens many times to me. I feel lonely, especially when I'm traveling, I'm on a tour, I'm in a plane, I am eating every, you know, at night by myself. I'm going from this country to another country. Um, and you're, you're on your own. And there are moments that you feel lonely. It's not shameful. Uh, There's not something wrong with it. It's just an emotion that arises. Okay, loneliness is here. I feel lonely right now. Fine. There's nothing wrong with feeling lonely. What the problem is, is if you're attaching a story to it, you're adding up a story to your loneliness. That why am I lonely? What's wrong with me? Uh, I'm always lonely. I uh, shouldn't be lonely. Uh, nobody loves me. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not rich enough. Um, if I was more pretty or if I was more hip or more happening or or whatever the story you're attaching to it, then you're in trouble. Because now you're not fine and perfect the way you are, and you have to change yourself to be, to be something else. Whether you have to have more money or you have to look different or you have to be more popular or famous or more sexy, or you got to be younger, or you got to be older, whatever. Otherwise, feeling what you feel in a moment, it's perfectly fine and expressing it, whatever that is. It's like not attaching a story to it. That's where the problem is. So far, any comments, any questions before I move on to the next thing? Nada. So that's one part. Another part is that Hilda mentioned about being suppressed is that speaking our truth. So a lot of us have uh, been shut down, especially in our childhood. I mean, I experienced it myself of being shut down when you are five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, especially back in the day. Now, maybe it's different. Of course, I'm not a 12 year old kid in a modern country to know uh, what is going on or in generally what's happening in the families. But I remember my own time, how many times adults shut me down or they told me to shut up, you don't know, or be quiet, uh, you're not in a position to express your feelings, or look at him and who's asking you questions, or you're just a kid, you're stupid, you don't know anything. I think we all experience this in one way or the other. I mean, maybe your parents didn't tell you you're stupid, but somehow they shut you down and and uh, somehow the attitude was, you're not worthy enough, or you're a kid, uh, or you're not mature enough to express your feelings or to have an opinion. Yeah, you remember that? Does this make sense? Are you here with me? Yeah, right. Okay, so that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is, let's say, 
in your relationship with your dad or your mom, uh, especially like kids with their dad, you know, and that is the ultimate power. And we're all looking up to our dad. And, uh, and, and you, your dad is telling you this or that, or putting you down. And you don't have the courage or you don't feel like you can stand up and tell your dad or tell your mom or an authority that, no, this doesn't feel right for me. Um, and you're wrong or you're insulting me, especially when we're younger. So naturally we start creating this energetic barrier of protection, like armors, like during the medieval time that they were wearing all these metal armors for the warriors before they go to the battle. So they had protection around them. And we create this energetic barriers uh, so because we're kids and we cannot protect ourselves against the adults emotionally and physically. So we have to create these barriers. Now, as we get older, how about if you're working in an office and your boss is abusive? or your coworker who is maybe one step ahead of you is abusive and uh, putting you down. And a lot of us, uh, because of our backgrounds and our upbringing, feel like we cannot speak our truth. We cannot say, hey, uh, in a cool way, I need to share this with you. I don't appreciate or I don't feel comfortable with the way you talk to me. You're bussing me around or you're being rude to me. And uh, look at your life. How many times you've been in a situation like this in your life? Or let's say you're waiting in a line, you know, you're going to store, you want to buy some bread, and then somebody comes and cuts, cuts in front of you. And uh, a lot of people, they just, they get a bit uncomfortable and they don't say anything because the fear of confrontation. Personally, I'm not very confrontational, but there are times like I would have to tell the person, excuse me, sir, I was waiting here before you came. You know, please, you know, wait for, wait in line. And it's always an uncomfortable situation to say that. Or it's an uncomfortable situation to speak to an authority, your, your boss, that's got the authority and the power over you, or your dad who's got the power over you, telling him that, hey, you know, I don't really appreciate the way you talk to me. I don't appreciate you being rude. I don't appreciate your comments. Or maybe, you know, you go out with a group of um, co-workers and you're the only woman there. There's five guys and they're making sexual jokes and you find it insulting. They're not maybe making jokes about you, but they're making fun of women. And you don't know what to say, you're uncomfortable. And the moments that you have to speak your truth, you have to get up and say, hey, you know what? I don't really appreciate these comments you're making. I'm a woman and I'm here. You know, you wanna make your, sexual jokes or or uh, racist jokes, don't say them in front of me. So it's a very uncomfortable situation. 
But those are, there are moments you're going to have to speak your truth. Otherwise, you're going to be angry with yourself. There are moments you're going to have to be political and be savvy and keep your mouth shut uh, because you may just destroy your career. So you're going to have to feel it. Um, you can't just be one way always. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to keep your mouth shut. Uh, sometimes you have to speak. So there's no one formula that serves all. But ultimately, at the end of, uh, end of the line, you're going to have to be truthful and honest to yourself. And that's the only job you have in your life, to be truthful and honest to yourself. That's the main job we have, being really truthful to our own integrity, to our own energy. What is my truth? And doing whatever I have to do to honor myself, whatever that is. For example, Back in the day, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when I heard the calling to go to India and to, to look for a spiritual master, uh, I had a career. I was a sales manager for an insurance company. I had 18 people working for me at that time. And they were all older than I was. And I had a very good income at that point. And when the calling came, I quit my job, which drove my parents crazy and my family. And, you know, I had short hair, so I let my hair grow. And, uh, and then uh, ultimately, I went to Iran, and from Iran, I went to India. And, and I went against a lot of resistance from my family and friends, telling me that I'm crazy, I've lost my mind. What the hell are you doing? Why are you going to India? India is very dangerous. And uh, where are you going? What are you doing? And I had to let go of everything and really follow my heart and be honest to my own truth. Because my truth was freedom. I wanted to become free. I wanted to become happy. And I looked around and I didn't find that happiness around me. And I didn't feel like the people... Nobody around me had the wisdom to give me the transmission and the teachings. Of course, years after I realized I never had to go anywhere. And what I was looking for was always here. But at that time, I didn't have the wisdom. So the bottom line is that we eventually learn sooner or later to be honest and truthful to ourselves, to follow our hearts, whatever our heart, whatever is your calling, to follow your calling. And sometimes it may take years before it reveals itself. And it's okay. You just stay on the path and you just follow your heart. And see, and then, then it just always, when you stay truthful to your own self and you express yourself, at least to yourself, and you don't suppress your truth, it always leads you to freedom. You always come to freedom.
a drift drug. Can I, um, um, I send you two emails? Okay. Um, and I want to order something. And I don't know if it is possible to bring it to uh, with to Frankfurt. Okay, and what uh, what what is it you wanted to order? I want to order the all product combo without the uh, awareness session because I practice awareness since a uh, few years, but I need all the rest. You stop the the teachings for the healer, so I must do it on this way now. <laughs> I'm and, sorry. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Um, you order some products, right? And then yeah. I think they're digital. So they're... They, they are all digital. Okay. Yeah, they're digital products. So... Um, And then you went you went on our website and you ordered them and and we didn't respond. No, um, I know yeah. that you have uh, your book as an as an no, as an um, paper book and I want right. the paper book for example. Yeah. I need right. to to um, feel it. <laughs> and um, in the all product combo, there is also the. Um, the the CD five D quantum awareness teaching episode one, and I think this I don't need, but the rest I need. And I thought it okay. um, that this are CDs, normal CDs. Yeah. Discs, discs. I, yeah, we don't we know if they have like the heart awakening or third eye activation in the form of DVD anymore, because okay. we. Nobody has a DVD player any longer. So. Me, me, I'm old fashioned in many things. <laughs> the book I'm going to bring you, I, I have a couple here. I'm going to bring it for you. Uh, can Hilda contact you and, uh, and ask you exactly what is it you need? And because this is the Academy time and then, um, or, or we'll email you and ask you exactly what is it you need, and then and then we go from there. And I I um, sent you an email exact with, with the things I exactly want. Okay, I I, I will look it up because, um, yeah, it's just been a lot. Um, probably Amir missed it. He because we're traveling all the time. A lot of traveling happening. I know. So there's also a lot of miscommunication happens when I'm traveling constantly from one country to another country. But I'll look it up. Okay. Th th thanks for bringing it up. But okay. I'll definitely bring you the physical book with me. Thanks. <laughs> okay. And we're going to see you in Frankfurt, right? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. both. <laughs> I look forward to it. Really? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll, yeah. Nor, normally, somebody else has answers the emails, so I'm going to look into it and see what happens. I'll check it out. You know, it was crazy. I dreamed before that you can't come because you uh, had an illness. I dreamed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I got to LA, I got very sick. Mm -hmm. So we had to uh, change move around Frankfurt from uh, the first week of October to the first the week. Of, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. at one point I thought I may have to cancel the whole tour, but then I recovered. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, thank you for telling me. I, I, I'll make sure I look, uh, I personally will, uh, look into it and take care of it no problem okay thanks have a good fly and a good time in in norway and in poland well thank you i appreciate it and i look forward <laughs> to seeing you in frankfurt yes. yes all right hi anita how are you nice seeing you i'm fine 
fine. I'm looking forward to seeing you seeing you next week. <laughs> yes, me too. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it. I also yeah. so excited. I never have been to Norway, uh, Norway, and I booked the hotel today, and uh, I will see how is it. <laughs> it's very exciting. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to to travel and discover somewhere new. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. I'm so happy that you will join us, Anita. Welcome. Yeah, Hilda, thank you for you. Thank you because you're the one you encouraged me, you know. Uh, I wouldn't have realized it, I think. Mm -hmm. But I got encouragement from you and I'm very happy uh, I decided that, especially in this time, it was really good. I think it yeah. was uh, like destiny, some, something like this, mm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking forward to see you and Sarah yes, Instagram, exactly. and everything. We yes. are so excited. Yeah. 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 Very good. Well, I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you for joining me. Um there won't uh well there won't be an academy for the next three weeks, of course, because I'm in Europe. But we'll be posting uh, videos and about our whereabouts and everything. Mm -hmm. So until I see you in the next two, three weeks, uh, be well and looking forward to reconnecting. Namaste. Much love. Thank you for joining me.